Will Devon AI be the end of coding as we know it, or is it just another massively overrated AI model? It seems like everywhere you look, Devon AI is being glorified as the software engineering killer, which are bold claims about an AI being developed by Cognition, a company actively recruiting human software engineers. Now, if you're getting your information from most YouTubers or from media sites, chances are that you have been misled and misinformed about Devon. In this video, I'll give you an unbiased rundown of everything we know so far about Devon AI, including a background on the company in charge of its development, Cognition Lab so that you can form your own opinions based on the facts rather than the sensationalism being put out by social media. The catalyst for all the fuss over Devon was a one minute video posted by Cognition Labs on March 12th, 2024. Before we dive deep into their video, we first need to understand a couple of things about Cognition Labs. Though they are a startup, these guys are no joke. The team is made up of elite competitive programmers with multiple gold medals under their belt. To give you an idea, this is a clip of Scott Wu, the founder of Cognition Labs when he was just a kid. If the pattern shown continues, what is the letter in the 2010th position? Scott. A. A is the correct answer. What is the value of 255? Scott. 5,000. 5,000 is the correct answer. And the next question is, the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 can be arranged to, Scott. 60. 60 is the correct answer. Needless to say, when it comes to mathematics and computer science, these guys are OP. They've raised over $21 million, pulling in investors like Patrick and John Collison, founders of Stripe, as well as Tony Hsu, CEO of DoorDash. As it turns out, one of the biggest costs for tech giants, especially software heavy fan companies like DoorDash, are software engineers. So it makes sense that they're willing to invest large amounts of dough into a company that's promising to reduce one of their biggest expenses. Now, does that mean that you should be worried if you're a developer at one of these companies? Well, no, not necessarily. Despite all the headlines saying that Devon will be the death of software engineering, what they are failing to realize is that to describe a system and its functions to an AI, and then to make that system cohesive and interdependent, you still need to have a deep level of programming knowledge. In other words, you're always going to need programmers. For instance, let's take a look at the video that started it all. In the first 30 seconds of the video, Scott asks Devin to benchmark Llama 2 on three different API providers. Now, you might understand what that means since you're watching one of my videos and you're probably somewhat programming literate, but to the general public who doesn't know what a benchmark test is or what llamas have to do with AI, this means little to nothing. Shortly after giving Devin a task, he goes into planning mode where he then fires up a terminal and a browser and magically completes the project without any intervention, or so the video would have you believe. You see, during this crucial process, the video brings your attention to three things, the terminal, the browser, and the code editor. But they conveniently leave out the workspace where Scott is continuously giving commands in the background, like measure the walk clock wrong time of the API and use the REST API directly to be fair, and even guiding the AI by providing it with specific documentation. These are commands that the majority of people outside of programmers and software engineers would have trouble giving to the AI. But that's just the thing, Devon AI was not designed to replace software engineers, but rather to enable them to do more complex and challenging tasks. And I don't blame Cognition Labs for the misleading information, as they have never, at least not that I'm aware of, have made any public statements saying that Devon will be the end of coding, unlike some people. What should people focus on when it comes to education? What should they learn? How should they educate their kids and their society? Well, excellent question. I'm going to say something and it, it's, it's going to sound completely opposite um, of what people feel. Uh, over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It's the social media websites that want to prey on your fears of losing your job or a future job if you're still in college that have been spreading this misinformation. Even the statement made by Nvidia CEO need to be taken with a grain of salt. Nvidia's market cap surpassed that of Amazon this past year, and that's entirely writing on the back of AI technology. In other words, he has a lot of skin in the game and saying anything else could literally cost him billions. Now, that's not to say that he's wrong. At the end of the day, there is a very real possibility that software engineers will be replaced with AI developers. So what nobody seems to be asking is what happens next? You see, ChatGPT4 can already write an entire book. Does that mean we no longer need authors or journalists? Generative AI like Midjourney can already make high quality pictures. Does that mean that we no longer need graphic designers? No, we'll always need people skilled in these arts. What media sites are failing to realize is that the day that programming AI gets a 100% on the SWE bench is the same day that almost everyone's job becomes at risk of 
of being replaced by AI. And that's because the speed of development for other AI models will drastically increase. In other words, AI will breed more AI. For instance, Neuralink is already using a robot for neurosurgery rather than actual neurosurgeon. But that's a video for another day. If you made it this far into the video and you're interested in getting a deeper understanding of software engineering and learning how to program with projects that you can add to your own resume, then look no further than Code Crafters. Chances are you probably have already heard of them since they have one of the most well-known GitHub repositories out there. With Code Crafters, you learn by building your own versions of real technologies such as BitTorrent, Docker, and Git. Each project starts from scratch and gradually teaches you through hands-on challenges in a real-world environment. Oh, and did I mention that they support a wide variety of languages, whether you wish to improve on your existing knowledge or learn an entirely new language. And once you're done, you'll have another project to add to your resume. If you'd like to know more, you can check them out through the link in the description. They're offering a free tier and a 40% discount on their paid membership to viewers of this channel. Now, let's get back to Devin. At the end of the day, Devin did score a 13% on the street bench, which is a 138 improvement on the previous best AI model. Claude 2. If you don't know what the Sweet Bench is, it's a data set that tests system's ability to solve GitHub issues automatically. In other words, it's a leaderboard for AI, and Devin is a beast compared to the next best available model. But at least for now, it can't even replace the job of an unpaid software engineering intern. The way that Cognition Labs is headed, I can definitely see them turning Devin into a useful AI that can take care of a lot of the grunt work for software engineers. But will Devin ever be the software engineering killer it's hyped up to be? I'll leave that up to you.